Um, okay, so this one is a little weirder. They're going to get weirder from here on out. Um, so uh, this is taking data from uh, this is this is out of Maryland. Their uh, their event data set. Um, I apologize for not uh, labeling the, the title of the chart here, um, but the idea is basically to take all the different properties that uh, traffic events can take on. So. Uh, in yellow here, we have the day of the week that a traffic event was reported. Uh, in green is the incident type. Um, so if it was a collision or a disabled vehicle or uh, it's a you know, road work event, each one of those code differently. Um, and then we plot in purple the condition of the roadway, so whether or not the surface was dry or wet or if there was snow on the ground. Uh, and then in this orange, we plot the, the county in which these events were logged. And then we uh, draw all these arcs in between them. I'm going to switch over to the interactive version. Uh, five box. And so we actually have some labels on here. Um, you can see uh, we're actually drawing out uh, to Monday here. Uh, the outer arcs here, whoa! Let's give that a refresh and see if that helps. This is a demo. No one's actually using this product. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we have some options here. So uh, uh, so you'll notice there's two rings on the outside. Uh, three, three nodes. The outer ring represents the uh, the field that's being mapped. So created day of week in, in the case of the yellow one, and the inner ring represents the value that uh, the data can take on. So in this case, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then we can uh, select any one of these, and we'll see all of the events that uh, have that property mapped to uh, each of the other categories of information uh, and see the property that they take on. So let's select uh, Friday. Uh, and now we filter out everything else, everything that didn't occur on Friday, and we're able to you know, follow these paths. So we can see that um, there's this, uh, there are 133 events that uh, happened on uh, Friday on an unspecified road condition. So someone didn't enter the, the data for that. And then there are another uh, 135 that happened on Friday during dry conditions. And the thickness of each uh, part that's drawn out here uh, represents how many uh, events have that pair of variables in common. Uh, so if you roll over small ones, that's only 10, because that's Friday during an ice or snow event. And then there's some tools that we have in here to kind of drill down a little bit. Um, so that's, that's the full data set there. It gets kind of messy. Um, we can filter things out. Oh, really? I am not going to resize the window. So trust me, there's some sliders here. Um, so I'm able to filter things out. Uh, and what I'm doing here is basically graying out any, uh, any arcs that are below the threshold that I'm setting here. So uh, 140 um, minimum events to actually have color here. And then I have a second slider uh, also over here that you can't see uh, that I can manipulate that will throw stuff away altogether if it falls outside um, that threshold. So this right here ends up being uh, the area where things are grayed out. This is colored and it's up to the left of that is, is dark altogether. I'm gonna Go back to the default here. Uh, so that's that's that visualization. The idea basically being, if you want to know what properties are uh, important, what or rather what relationships between properties are important in your data set, which ones come up very commonly, then you want to look for the larger edges, and if you want to look to the exceptions for those rules, you're going to look for the smaller ones. Yeah.
But so the thing I've established this is weird. Um, you guys, useful? Uh, this was in 
inspired by uh, another visualization um, that um, basically did the same thing with a, a different data set. Uh, we wanted to kind of apply it to ours. Um, actually, the next demo I'm going to go into uh, is kind of taking the same concept, but unwrapping a circle. So um, that might actually be a decent segue. If no one else has anything they want to say. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, as far as um, choosing the order in which the, the inner layer appears. Uh -huh. ours, yeah. Um, I think it would be better if not all tiny ones are close together. So that way we would, it would, it would be easier or the arcs would yeah. go to the center of them. And we would yeah, we just them. went alphabetical here, which there's no real reason. I mean, it's spacing out a circle. There's no reason it should be alphabetical. So yeah, maybe like if you in order one separating out. Bigger arc and one smaller one. Or yeah. Uh, two things. Uh, the prior diagram of the spirals. Yeah. On the day rather than days a week, you could have peak versus non peak. Yeah. And yeah. We have two classes on the left, left side, and our, our various type of incidents more likely to occur in the or not be a question, a useful question. Yeah, you seem to determine when that actually is to, to do that. Yeah. This, the other thing, close to your ground from Maryland, so you need to build the cavities and variations. Um, what is the measure of the time that gives the lift of the inner arc? It's a, it's a number of events coming in, a number of events that have that county as as intended mostly. Just just the number of events in that visualization. So it's not it's it's might not be the most accurate way to do it. Uh, these are um, events logged by Maryland State Highway Administration, so it's primarily highway stuff, and mostly it's on the, the roads that they're still monitoring. If they'll get a call in something they need to be aware of, it's something that's not allowed to log in. But for the most part, it's pretty late. Alright, so. Uh,